All right, everyone. So I'm here with Corey Nuno, right? And him and I started working together. He joined my mentorship, um, say a couple months ago. I'm not sure the exact day. I'll put that in the description. But he joined my mentorship a little while ago. And um, ever since then, he's, he's encountered a lot of different stuff. I'm sure he was in a different place. But first, I'm just going to let him introduce himself. And um, first kind of thing to kind of get you started. Cool. What drove you to, to start your business and, and all that good stuff? Just tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, wow, I don't know where to where to start. You know, there's so many places I can start from. But um, yeah, coming from a background of, you know, doing so many different things. I um, was getting involved with affiliate marketing. I was doing e-commerce, you know, all of that within the last four years. And uh, I liked it a lot. I liked, I liked the field. The only thing is that when I was dealing in that area, as far as, you know, trying to figure out where, to, where I wanted to plant my flag at and put most of my time, uh, I wind up choosing affiliate marketing back then because wasn't really any big overhead or anything like that you know it just sounded so good you know you just had to just drive traffic to you know a landing page and 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 put some offers out there and get money so I had a little success with that but um only thing is that you know I invested into wrong mentors you know people that only showed you uh you know kind of a little bit where to go you know and things like that as far as how to get leads and traffic and things like that and it was just, uh, you know, it was a good experience. So I put that on pause for a while because uh, I wasn't making money and I had quit one of my jobs at the time to focus heavily on that. So then, you know, a few months later, you know, I start seeing, you know, YouTube ads, Facebook ads about, you know, e-commerce and how that's the best thing to get into. And so I dove right into that and, you know, I started paying mentors and, and, you know, paying for courses, you know, courses that were like $1,000 and, you know, trying to like saying, this is it, this is going to be it, you know, and this is the last thing I'm ever going to do, you know, and once I started investing in that, uh, I started doing good. I started really doing good. But only thing is, you know, I just didn't like the fact that I was, uh, you know, getting customers, getting emails like crazy from customers from <laughs> from different parts of the United States saying, where's my package, you know, this and then the third. And it really started to kind of like really bother me, you know, like if I'm going to do something like this, I have to have a warehouse where I can control the fulfillment and things like that. So I kind of put that on pause. Plus, you know, uh, uh, results started to drop. Plus the emails that I were getting, was getting kind of discouraged me. That I wasn't really fulfilling my promise with, uh, with, uh, you know, delivering the package and packages and things like that. And, you know, the refunds and things like that. So uh, I, I took a break for a while. This is probably maybe, maybe around like 2018 last year uh, for a while. So I can really kind of figure out what I really want to do. Um, I thought about going back to affiliate marketing. I'm like, no, I can't. I don't want to do that because if I go back and do that, it's going to be the same thing. So I really took my time and, you know, it was really kind of hard what to pick. You know, so I kept doing YouTube researches, you know, like, you know, the best business to start in 2018 and, and all this other stuff. And uh, then one of my buddies, uh, which is kind of funny, I had another buddy named Nick, <laughs> had another buddy named Nick. He was like, Corey, um, all of your marketing experience that you have, I think you should get involved with um, helping people with your businesses, you know, as far as running ads, because you were good at e-commerce so you should start you know getting to where you, uh, get involved with something where you can help a business grow so i was like really like how does that work man you know this on the third so he put me in a webinar <laughs> i know this is a lot but you know i'm you know i just want to share my journey of where no, i came from until now that's awesome you know so he was like yeah Corey, you know just stop on this webinar man and you know um you know come take a look at it and so I did, and I was really grateful um, because he was actually one of my mentors and coaches and other businesses, and I'm always grateful for that guy. And so I went on the webinar, and it was kind of funny. Uh, they were talking about lead generation, you know, helping chiropractors out, dentists, you know, different businesses out. And it really kind of was like, wow, this is easy. I can do this from home. You know, this is not an affiliate product. This is not, I have to ship a fulfillment out to a customer. 
Only thing is I had to just deliver on helping the business um, bring actual people in, you know? So um, at the time the prices were high. I'm not going to lie. The prices were very, very high to get involved in something like that. And I know I spent way beyond my means as far as um, money to get involved with that, you know? So I kind of said, you know what, I'll take a break and I'll, I'll kind of figure this out on my own. So I started, you know, uh, searching YouTube, you know, like everybody else does, you know, but I had a only thing I had the confidence in doing was the Facebook marketing, but I just didn't know how to, you know, do it towards getting the person, the customer. So um, after running around countless of videos, um, I came across a video um, uh, from one of the guys in the group, Xavier, and I, I, I kind of passed on his video to, you know, two or three times. I saw his video like for like three, three or four seconds. And I'm like, nah, I said, this is, this is a little kid, man. I'm like, I don't want to see this little kid talking, man. I'm like, I'm 31 years old, man. I'm like, I got to find somebody my age getting results. So next thing, you know, I went back in my history again and, you know, I was looking for some music to kind of, you know, a song or something or whatever. And then I seen Xavier again in my history. And I'm like, you know what? I said, let me just click on this video. I said, it's not a long video. He's obviously getting results. So, you know, instead of listening to this song, I'll just turn around and, you know, see what this kid has to say. And I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe I passed on this kid, you know. And the kid gave so much uh, hate on the kid because he's a grown man. He's 18, 17, 18 years old. Um, but Xavier's video of him, you know, closing a dental client, I think, in Jamaica and then giving value on how he closed and, it was so accessible for me to reach out to him. And then when I spoke with him, you know, you, you, uh, I wasn't dealing with the 18 year old kid, you know, I, I felt like I was dealing with somebody way mature, somebody that was past their age. So I spoke with him and it was, it was great, man. Um, then I got introduced to you and it was kind of cool because, you know, usually when you speak to someone on YouTube or whatever, you think that someone's always trying to sell you something. Someone was always trying to, you know, what, what's in it for me at the end of the day, let me give you something free for a price. And it was all value. And I wasn't used to that. I was always used to somebody trying to um, sell you something and then trying to, you know, figure out a way how they can, you know, get you to pay 10 grand or five grand, you know, for something. But, you know, and then when I found this community, you know, with you, Nick and, uh, the other few guys that are in the that are in the group, it was just so refreshing to see people like minded, all in one 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 group, that was helping, supporting each other, pushing people like literally pushing everybody to one good, and there's nobody jealous of anybody. Everybody's a helping hand, and like I said, it was just refreshing to see that, you know. So from so from going to from what I've been through to now it's kind of like night and day. And, uh, and I, and I noticed for the, you know, uh, the price that, you know, you charged me to work with you, it was very fair. It was very fair, you know, compared to what other businesses were, you know, are charging and things like that, especially for mentorship. And I couldn't do this, uh, mentorship without, um, not just a course, but you, you, you need one-on-one -on -one contact with people. People are selling courses out there. And I think, you know, courses are only good for certain things, but for the type of industry that we're doing, you, we, we need some type of one-on-one, -on -one, um, you know, type of, uh, you know, dialogue between a mentor and a mentee so that, you know, we can get from point A to point B uh, a lot quicker than just a course because the course is great, but guess what's going to happen? You're going to have a lot of questions inside the course that you really can't virtually answer <laughs> inside you know ver versus speaking with someone one to one one to one so so yeah so that was my 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 journey pretty much coming from background affiliate marketing e-commerce and to now um getting into the space where you know you can start providing value and helping people get from point a to point b with their businesses so so yeah i hope that kind of just kind of just gave you a little uh breakdown yeah, for sure. Awesome. No, thank you, Corey. And so once you, we talked and you were like, all right, yeah, let's do this. I want to commit to like your mentorship and all that good stuff. What, um, what were your, once you got in the program, 
um, and the mentorship, what were your kind of initial thoughts? Like maybe like the first month or what have you been your, what were your initial thoughts with everything and what were you kind of feeling like and how was your head at that point, I guess, from coming from where you were? Yeah. So, yeah. So, so I really didn't mind I because, you know, I was already investing in myself before and I really didn't see a big deal investing in myself again. You know, of course, education wise. So it wasn't really about, oh, man, here comes this other guy. He's trying to, you know, you know, uh, string me along to do some type of mentorship. It wasn't like that. I'm like, if I already, you know, I've already paid other people for stuff. Why not, you know, pay someone else? You know, I mean, you know, there's a there's a saying. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. But, you know, you're 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 already you're already you're already hurting already. You know, like for us, like pain and struggles, you know, you know, why not get a reward from it? You know? Yeah. So I'm like, dude, I mean, I've been struggling for so long, you know, trying to, you know, make things happen for myself, you know, why quit now? Get a reward from it, you know, keep investing in yourself and your knowledge and, and, um, and, and you'll find, and you'll finally get there. So, um, I'm not sure what the other question was. I apologize. No, you're fine. Um, that, that answers it. What, so when you started, what, what kind of niche were you in? And now where are you at now? And describe, I guess, your first, like, within the mentorship, at least, the first time encountering really good success and maybe even the first or multiple times encountering really hard failure and how you kind of dealt with that. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. When I, when I first started, um, I started, you know, to, you know, do what everybody else was doing, you know, doing the dental niche. Uh, but the thing was, I was really passionate about it because <clears throat> I went to the dentist and, you know, I have a good relationship with my dentist still, you know. And so I said, you know, maybe I should go into the dentist niche. But, you know, little did I know, again, that everybody else was hitting that that niche up. And is it saturated? Yes and no. You know, it all depends on your method of, you know, reaching people and talking to people and things like that. So I did it for a while. Um, I've got meetings. I got people replying back to me, which was exciting because I didn't use your methods. <clears throat> I wasn't using your methods before, um, you know, as far as trying to reach out to different people on, you know, whether it's Facebook, whether it's, you know, doing some type of Instagram reach and outreach or anything like that. So it was, uh, it was, it was okay in the beginning, but then as I started to really, you know, trying to just focus on one niche and try to reach out to, many dentists as possible i started getting replies back and as i got replies back i got people that were interested weren't interested um, i've got a few appointments my first month which was which was which was great you know uh i didn't think i was going to get appointments my first month i don't know why i wouldn't think that but you know uh i didn't think it was going to happen that fast but um the appointments that i were that i was doing i was nervous you know um uh, I, I, I stuck to the script, but the only thing is I wasn't confident. And I think that's why um, most businesses, they didn't go with me for the first couple months because I wasn't confident in myself. And I believe if you're going to close somebody on something, people, they don't want to see how much you know. They want to see how confident are you. And then they want to see how much you know. So when you have those two things together, you know, you know, people are business owners. Uh, people that run businesses, they, they, they deal with, you know, BS on a daily basis. They can, they can sniff out who's serious, who's not, you know, things like that. So one thing I started doing, you know, the next couple of months is uh, start offering free trials. And <clears throat> I know there's a big, <laughs> there's a big saying in the industry that, you know, free trials are, you know, oh, you, you know, you're, you, you lose if you do a free trial, the customer doesn't really value you, you know, because uh, you do free trials and then after the, week or two free trials they're not going to do business with you because of uh because uh you were offering something free why are they going to pay you a thousand dollars well you got I, I looked at it like this way they can think that they can feel that all they want but when i had got this one uh one business to uh give me a, a chance and do a free trial with them you know whether they paid me at the end or not was totally fine i was doing it for me i wanted to make sure that i was delivering I knew how to drive traffic and deliver results, you know, first, because if you can't, if you can't picture yourself and see the leads coming in yourself, you won't, 
like in the put it, you won't feel confident doing it for anybody else. You got, you have to personally see the process go through first. Once you know you can do that, something in your head clicks. You know, you can do it for any other industry or any other, any other niche because you actually went on the computer, you set the campaigns up and you saw leads come in and uh, things like that. But that's why I really did a free trial so I can kind of get and see the results. It wasn't so much of the money. And I think if people stop worrying about money the first time, you know, when they, when they start getting into this, they will start doing so much better because you, you have to really convince yourself. You're not convincing the other dentists. You got to convince yourself that you can see this working for you and then it can start trickling and things like that. So don't worry about the money coming, worry about getting good at giving awesome value first in the beginning, and then you'll start getting confident. Totally. Yeah. A hundred percent nail on the head there. And so now I guess you've, you've gone through like everything we've been doing this. I, I checked, you started May 6th. So it's just about to be September. So it's been a, been a while actually. Um, it's been about like four or five months or so. And so from that point where you started with dentists and you were, you were getting quite a bit of meetings. And I remember for at some point you hit a really like just dry spur, like you were getting pretty much nowhere. I think you were still doing stuff, but you, you weren't getting anywhere too much. And you switched your niche to cryo and then you started getting like for the past, I'd say like month, maybe, maybe a little bit less. And you can explain this, which has been crazy. You've probably been getting like, I know for the past two weeks, definitely you've been getting like at least, and having one meeting with a business owner every single day, like consistently nonstop. And then that led finally to your first deal. And hopefully this next week, a few other deals. So I guess kind of explain the feeling of really not really getting anywhere. And then now you, you've seen it you've, with your own eyes. You've been doing it for the past like two, three weeks. And you've been having meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting. Like, how does that feel? And then talk about, I guess, like your first deal as well, like all the emotions with it, just like everything. Yeah, it's, you know, um, you know, it's kind of funny you mentioned that because uh, when I when I was, uh, I tell you right now, it, it always felt like I always had a client. I don't know why it feels like that. It always felt like I always had a client. Um, it's kind of weird to kind of explain that, but I won't go far into that. It's fine. Uh, it, it feels good, man, you know, cause it feels like you have a, <laughs> it feels like you have a process now. It feels like you kind of have a process, a predictable process to actually speak to people and talk to people. And, um, and what I did last week was, you know, I reached out, I mean, a couple weeks ago, I make sure it doesn't matter where you're at, you know, when you do outreach and you can be literally at a restaurant outreaching, outreaching and, and sending messages and things like that. But I think the best outreach anyone can do uh, is Instagram or Facebook mark Facebook messaging because those are the two platforms if you outreach you'll get a bunch of messages back and depending on how many messages you send out in a day and I really only really recommend anybody just do two or three hours or maybe even you know five hours if you really want to go hard like me I do five hours of outreach you know and and then let that trickle over throughout the week and once you let that trickle over throughout the week you'll have people from like three days ago, you know, message you and say, Oh yeah, I just got your message. And then that's what led me to have, I counted, it was 13, 13, had 13 appointments, um, phone appointments. Uh, I think it was the other week ago, like two weeks ago, 13 phone appointments, two weeks ago. Yeah. And you know, out of that 13, um, I closed one person and, you know, even though the, the, the numbers are not really there because you may, they may say, well, you know, Corey, that sucks, man. I mean, well, out of 10 people, you're really supposed to close three. That's how I look at it. But, you know, I looked at it that, hey, you know, I, I dropped the ball on some of these calls. That's, that's totally fine as long as I can own up to it and, know, and find out and know my mistakes, you know, and take notes on what I did. I can kind of fix that problem. So the next time I set myself up with 10, 12, 13 appointments, I'll make sure I close three or four uh, deals next time. And it's always, a it's always a learning phase. And I don't think people should, should compare their chapter one to somebody else's chapter 21. You know? And the reason why I say that is because you don't know what that person on chapter 21 
the work that that person has put in for them to get to where they are today. So people can't come in and say, oh, this person is lucky, this person is this and that. You know, it takes more than a month to learn something. It takes more than two months to learn something. But when you stick to something, when you stick with something, one thing only, one thing only, you start to get the hang of it. You start to create a little process on how you're going to talk to people, how you're going to outreach to people. And you know what people are going to say next, which is the funniest thing. You know what people are going to say next when you start outreaching to them. So it's kind of like, you know, you have the remote in your hand. You can turn up the volume. You can turn down the volume. But the thing is, it's not being consistent, not just being complacent, saying, okay, great. I have 12 appointments now. Let me stop. You know, I mean, I want to push myself to where I have 20 appointments in the week and see what type of results that's going to get me. You know, I'm sure if I, if I have 20 appointments in a week and they're all qualified appointments out of 20 appointments, I can probably close six, you know? So, um, that's my, that's my goal right now. And, and the first client that I, that I have right now, that's, that's, uh, that out of the 12, out of the 12 appointments that I had, um, it's actually a qualified appointment. It's actually a qualified business been in business for 12, 13 years, um, added a new product to her business, uh, which was, which was CryoScan, uh, was doing great early in the year, kind of slowed down. And, and another thing that, um, a lot of people, um, that I see out there is that most people think you have to close on the first time, you know, you really don't, you really don't have to close, um, on the first, on the first meeting. And a lot of people that think they have to close in the first meeting, they're thinking about the money. So stop thinking about the money and start thinking about diagnosing the people. When you start thinking about diagnosing the person and what their business is going through, people actually feel like you really care about them. And then guess what? We have a second meeting. Then you have a third meeting. And then you'll have a, another meeting where they're actually going to be giving you, hey, how do we pay you? You know, things like that. So um, it's cool. I mean, the, the lady that... Um, that signed up with me for the $1,000 um, for the service. And then we're doing $1,000 plus ad spend right now. Uh, she, she's actually a really qualified, really cool client. And she, she texts me, she called me, wants to know, she texted me the other day, hey, how's your day going? Just want to make sure you, you know, just wanted to say hello to get my day going. This and that and stuff. I mean, just that and another. And, and I'm like, wow, I'm like, you know, I mean, that's not bad. Out of 12 meetings, you find one that's qualified. And they just text you just to say hello. I mean, but my goal is this week is to give it, uh, but then the next couple of weeks is to give her some, some awesome results just so that we can um, uh, take this to the next level with her. So, so yeah. Totally. Yeah. The number one thing, like really good, like uh, I've had people ask me like, okay, how do you keep a client for like a really long time, like a year or maybe more or 12, six months, 12 months, whatever. I'd say like the number one thing for that is a client can or a person can break a contract a person can't break a relationship is easy so like building a really strong relationship with people is awesome you've already started to do that with her um i guess it's just a few more quick things so what have what's been your experience with with like this mentorship and whether it was positive or negative i guess what's been your overall experience with it and then whether it was with this or not, what's been like your, your change in mindset, if you've had a change in mindset, and you've already covered it pretty much really, really well with the mindset shift. Like at first you, I, I think you weren't as confident in like free trials or trials. And then you started to realize, I just need to give value. I just need to help as many people as I can. So I guess kind of touch on that. And then also what, what do you want to do in the future? What do you want to achieve in the future? Just, just stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So my, my take on this mentorship is that it is, um, it's one-on-one, man. I mean, you know, yeah, you have the courses there, things like that. I mean, I blew through those like, like a cheeseburger, man. I mean, I took, (laughs) it was so good, man. Like right after that, I mean, I think the next time we had spoke after that time, you know, we just started to, um, like, Corey, did you finish the, the modules? I was like, yeah, I already finished the modules. And we just started working together every week, whenever you you had time free, you know, so we can, you know, kind of go through things and things like that. Um, the, the mentorship, let me tell you, it, it's refreshing, man. I mean, like I said, I'm used to, you know, getting into buying mentorships and stuff like that and being on the monthly list, you know, and then once that month came around for me to 
get with that person, guess what? You know, oh, uh, emergency, emergency, an emergency had came up with someone. <laughs> and you're paying money every month and you never got that meeting with the person again. And, you know, it's, but then you start just losing hope, you know, that if, is this kind of like laptop lifestyle, you know, you know, working from home, something for you. Correct. And, and, you know, and, and we're human, I'm human, you know, so, you know, throughout the mentorship, you know, there's things that are like, you, you, you might not see results really, really quick the way you want to not saying that somebody can't come in here in the first month and blow it out the park and, and get a 10 K client. It's totally possible. It really is. It all depends on the person and, and their goals and things like that. Um, my goal the first month, maybe I, I came in this, I came into this a little cocky in the beginning thinking that, Oh, since I know Facebook ads, you know, I'm going to kill it. No, it's not about Facebook ads. It has nothing to do about Instagram ads, Google ads, <laughs> whatever ads, Bing ads, it has to deal with your brain here, you know, and I started to figure that out, you know, two or three months later, you know, so it's going on my fourth or fifth month in the, in the mentorship. And, you know, and although that I only have one client right now, that's totally fine because, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm not comparing myself to someone else's chapter 21. I'm staying in my lane. I'm not looking at anybody else's grass. I'm watering my own grass making sure my grass stays greener, honing on one particular thing, um, focusing on one niche and getting good at that. So this way, when I speak with business owners, business owners know that I'm the real deal because if you're going to work with somebody in the niche, they're going to want to know or feel that you're, that you know, know your stuff, you know, but um, as far as, um, as far as the program, like I said, I don't think there, there, there is any other program like yours um, on the market. You know, if there is, you know, people are paying five, ten, twenty thousand dollars plus, you know, whatever. Um, not saying that their program is probably bad or good, you know, but I just know what I have and the experience that I um, experienced with you and working with you that this is, you know, uh, something somebody should, you know, if they're, if they're serious about growing their business they should definitely uh, look into to working with you. And as far as where I want to go with this, as far as taking my, my um, digital marketing uh, agency and things like that, um, within, within this year, I mean, I still want to crack $110,000 this year. You know, that's my goal. My goal this year is at least crack six figures. I mean, it's totally feasible. It can definitely be done. You know, that's not really a, a big number. You know, it's not, it's really a small number in this industry. And only way I'm going to get there is, like I said, bringing value and bringing value to people, hopping on calls with people, talking to people, you know, because, you know, everybody's worried about the money. I'm worried about the diagnostics and the value. And it was kind of funny, uh, kind of just talking about diagnosis, diagnostics and value. I just had a call the other day with somebody and, you know, uh, I was, I, I didn't want, even want him to pay me any money. We just got on the call. I just kind of just gave him some value. And on the call, he was like, Corey, how much do I owe you? You know, this, this is worth like $5,000, $10,000 call. I said, dude, don't worry about it. It's, it's, don't worry about it. I'm glad to help you. So he sent me a text message says, listen, Corey, I feel a little kind of guilty about that call. Listen, I got somebody to come in, you know, uh, from what you told me how to, how to bring somebody to come in uh, to my cryo business and I actually set an appointment up for them to come in for a consultation and close them for, you know, a $350 product, uh, a session. And I just want to say, thank you, man. Can I send you some type of money? I'm like, you know what? If you feel so you want to go ahead and send me something, go ahead. So, you know, he sent me something. It wasn't a lot of money, but you know what? It was a token of, of appreciation and it's something that I totally didn't expect. So, Hasn't so, he yeah. set you up with any kind of referrals? Has he? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So, so this week, I I I probably got three or four appointments, just because of that guy and 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 the people that he has messaged and spoke to. Um, because of him, I have three or four appointments tomorrow, Monday. Awesome. You know, so, which is pretty cool. So, when you do good for people, you know, it doesn't have to be a lot. Just the smallest little thing you can do for somebody just to show them some type of results, you know, they'll, 
they'll give you they'll give you a, a good recommendation to people and you don't have to worry about kind of like you know showing case studies or whatever because you 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 start to become highly recommended definitely awesome man um that's awesome i really appreciate it do you have anything like final thoughts anything else you want to say about anything um only thing i can probably say is you know uh even when you want to feel like you want to quit you know even even if you get to the point where you where you want to quit and you feel as though like start second guessing yourself i believe that's the time to keep going you know and that's the time to keep keep going and the reason why that is because you know when they show an arrow of someone's success they you know when they show show, show an image of an an arrow of somebody's success that's not really success success is the is that time where you have those down periods in your your life you know that you want to quit and you want to give up and and you're three feet from gold every time you want to quit, just remember the guy that always took his shovel and left from digging was three feet from gold you know it could have been a client that you could have landed for xyz amount of money and that and you could have did a good job for them where they know five or six other businesses you know that would do the same thing and and you would have been that closer to your goal if you kept going so just don't quit when things start getting hard because you know, like I said, you know, don't compare your, your chapter one to somebody else's chapter 21. I know I said that a couple of times, but when I saw that quote, you know, it just hit me like, yeah, you really can't compare yourself. Don't compare yourself either to other people, you know, just focus on wording your own grass. Totally. Totally. Corey. Now that's awesome, man. Um, if anyone wants to reach out to you, I'll put like your Facebook or Instagram or information, whatever you want. People want to reach out to you if they see this, but that's awesome. I really appreciate everything. Um, You've been crushing it slowly but surely, you've been slowly but surely ramping up and you're just gonna keep going. So with that being said, thanks for thanks for talking and sharing your story. I'm sure people will find some massive value out of it. And uh, that being said, that that's it for this video, guys. I'll, I'll see you guys in the next one. Sounds good. Thanks for your time.